So regarding digitizing an analog image, which is what, um, it's what a CR cassette would give you. It's what your pictures that you take effectively are. Like you take a picture and have to display it on a screen. It's an analog image that gets displayed digitally. So here's how it's done. The computer needs to do three steps in order to take an image and then display it on a screen. Okay, it has to digitize the image. Okay, digitizing it just means to take something that is one continuous image and chunk it up into each little square and give each little square a, a value to display on this computer screen. Okay, so there are three steps. They call them scanning, sampling, and quantizing. Scanning is just dividing the image up to an, into a matrix of pixels. So it takes an image and then it, it, you imagine it overlaying the grid, right? And that grid will represent pixels. Each pixel would have a spatial location on the computer screen. That's the first step. In, um, and you guys know this, if anyone's used a copier, you know that copiers do something called a pre-scan sweep. Um, the light will go across the whole copier bay first, right? Put, an image, put a piece of paper on the copier bay, the light will go across the whole copier bay once, and then it'll go back through and actually um, scan the document. The first sweep, right, is called a pre-scan sweep. Um, and that is where the, the, the document is being looked at and they're basically the computer software is overlaying an imaginary grid that grid will give spatial location to each pixel um, in cr computed radiography where there's a piece of, of, of like a like a piece of film okay it will scan the image receptor plate in a pre-designated number of lines and we'll talk about sampling in a minute and it'll sample and a number of samplings per line. I'll, I'll get to that in just a second here. And I won't necessarily go over this next this last note right now, but scanning is just that. Scanning is taking the image and dividing it up into a matrix of cells. Each matrix will end up with a value, and each of those values will represent a brightness or a color on the computer screen. So then after the computer, after the software divides the image up into a, a matrix, into a, a series of squares to be displayed on the screen, right? It has to sample the squares, okay? Sample those um, values in the matrix, right? Look at each square and then measure the brightness of each square, right? So think about literally taking like a picture of something, printing it out and then putting it on a copier bay, right? That picture that you're holding in your hand, that hard copy picture, uh, is an analog image, okay? So it's, it's not digital, right? It's in your hand, it's an analog thing, okay? You put it on the copier bay, so just imagine a copier for right now. You're putting it on the copier bay, the glass window, the copier does its pre-scan sweep where it overlays an imaginary matrix on it, and then it has to scan each of those imaginary little cells. So each of those little cells, each of those little squares, needs to get scanned, it scans each square, and looks for the brightness, or in a, in a color photograph, it looks for the color of each square, okay? And then it'll assign each square a, a numerical value, a number value, right, for the brightness or color of the square, okay? That number value will be saved, that square will have that number value, and when that image is brought up on a computer screen, said individual square will always have that value. Okay, as long as you don't put it in Photoshop and change the values or put it through a filter, right? That's what you guys do when you, I don't know that you guys do this, but people who go on social media, right, and take pictures and use filters, right? They take a picture and they place the filter over it. Well, the filter's just changing the value of each pixel, like the same, right? If you put, I don't know, a sepia tone filter, right? It just changes the value equally of every pixel. The pixel gets, changes color by a little bit. Okay, um, this is how it's doing it because each pixel is a separate file and each file has a number value, a number associated with it, which equals a brightness or color. Okay, good. Okay, so sampling is taking a look at each pixel, each what would be each pixel, 
right? Um, each cell, and then measuring its brightness or a color, okay? The next step, the next step they call it digitize, or sorry, quantizing. It's digitizing too, but I guess, but quantizing, okay? Quantizing is taking the brightness that it showed you. So it, you, you scanned a pixel, it had a brightness, okay? That brightness is, in, is, is, um, is not gonna have a discrete number value yet, okay? The computer has to take that brightness and it has to assign it a, a shade of gray or a color. Okay, um, so it measures the brightness and then it's, it assigns it a specific color. A, one, and it can't be, um, you'll notice here in this example, right, there's only four different possible colors it can, uh, shades of gray that it can assign it. Black, dark gray, light gray, or white. So you're looking at the colors on the, on the shades of gray on the right hand side, right? Each pixel in this case will only have four different options. It can be either off, black, completely on white or one of the two middle options dark gray or light white and the brightness has to be converted into one of those four colors four four shades of gray okay that brightness that it measures for that image might not actually be one of those four shades of gray but the computer is just going to assign it the closest shade that it can the closest shade to the actual picture value the actual analog image brightness it'll assign it some shade of gray as close as it can to it. That's quantizing. Assigning a discrete number value assigned to each cell from a pre-designated gray scale or a pre-designated color scale, for example. Okay. So because the brightness measured is doesn't have like a discrete number value, it doesn't fit neatly into one of those shades of gray, there's, there's something called an analog to digital converter, which is a piece of software that will just round up or round down the measured value to the nearest available digital number, okay? It's just getting as close as it can to the actual, num to the actual um, shade of gray that exists on the, on, the, on the real analog image, okay? That's an analog to digital converter or ADC. Don't worry right now about the DA, the opposite direction. Worry right now about taking an analog image. And again, you can just imagine putting a, a, a picture on a scanner bay and a copier. That picture is an analog image. That copier, or scanner is probably a better, better way to think about it, right? That scanner takes and scans that picture and turns it into a computer file so you can look at it on your computer, right? You, um, you've got a bunch of old family photos, right? And you want to make sure that they don't degrade anymore because pictures sort of degrade over time, right? And so you want to put them all in a computer, okay? So you have to run them all across a copier bay, right? You put one at a time on a copier bay and each one is a computer file. That's what has to happen to those pictures. The computer has to scan that picture, divide it up into a matrix and assign each matrix a, a color, okay? Or if it's a black and white picture, a, a shade of gray, okay? Um, and the color on the picture might not be exactly what the computer can offer you, but it's going to choose the closest color possible for each square, okay? Better computers have uh, more available color options, so you can get as close as possible to the correct color, okay? So this next thing we're going to talk about is, is exactly that, okay? The, the uh, number of options for colors. Any, any pixel, any single pixel can, can show you, okay? So let me pause for a moment.